Okay, I'd like to show you how I use the custom uh, exercise in the Focus Builder app uh, with a, a patient that I actually saw today. So uh, before we get into that, I just want to give you a little overview here of some of the findings. The patient actually came in uh, complaining of uh, lower back pain and severe spasms and pain in his left calf. That's what brought him in. He just recently had a car accident. Uh, but he was diagnosed with cortical atrophy about two years ago. He had uh, difficulty with word retrieval and poor memory. And uh, so he's got a severe degenerative disc condition at L5 and S1. Some of the relevant findings are uh, left Achilles reflex 1, all other lower extremity reflexes are at 2+. Plus. Muscle strength was normal at 5 out of 5. Uh, finger to nose, he had bilateral hypometria. And with hypometria here, immediately we start thinking, okay, there's a problem with the cerebellum. Uh, right finger tap was progressively smaller amplitude with hypomemia. Uh, in this test here, we're thinking, okay, so uh, right finger tap, left frontal lobe, left frontal lobe decline. Um, but also right frontal lobe decline because his left finger tap had four hesitations uh, with hypomemia as well. His posture is camp McCormick meaning uh, uh, slump forward uh, with anterior head posturing. His gait had uh, very little arm swing bilaterally. So, you know, remember this patient's got cortical atrophy, so it's uh, expected that we'd find a lot of bilateral findings. His saccades are dysmetric in all directions, uh, worse vertical than horizontal. Uh, but in all directions, sometimes they're hypermetric, sometimes they're hypometric. So again, here we're thinking there's a definite cerebellum involvement. Um, also remember the cerebellum is hardwired to the frontal lobe. So a lot of the findings that we've got here are frontal and cerebellar. Uh, pursuits are intruded with saccades in all directions. So let's go to um, the Focus Builder app here so I can show you what I did uh, for this patient, I programmed one exercise uh, in which, in the custom exercise here, in which I could try to uh, achieve or target as, as many of the involved areas as possible um, in one exercise. So that would be uh, left cerebellum, right cerebellum, bilateral frontal, and um, and and I'm actually going here for a left uh, left temporal since he's having a hard time with word retrieval. So I will, uh, I am actually creating a, a background stimulation here uh, of a hemi-stim. And if we, if, if we go down a little bit lower here, you'll see that I chose some of the smallest uh, size uh, for, for the, you know, for the square to be because uh, the left brain actually prefers detail and smaller objects. Uh, the left brain does respond well to red, so I, I picked the red and white colors for uh, the hemistim. And the hemistim are going to show up in the upper right quadrant. So the right side for the left brain, upper quadrant is temporal, lower field of view is parietal, upper field of view is temporal. For that reason, I picked the right upper quadrant, and this is appropriate for this patient. Uh, I picked a speed of 14. Now, in the foreground, uh, I'm going to run a, um, a diagonal eye movement strategy. Uh, so starting with the bottom left corner, uh, I'm going to have a saccade move up to the right and pursue back down to the left. Uh, I chose sports set, so we're going to have sports item as a target just to keep it interesting. Um, and I'm also going to run um, the same exercise in the opposite direction as well um, and we're going to alternate like that. We get, we're going to do bilateral stimulation. The great thing about the diagonal eye movements is that they are very powerful um, or very, most effective for a hemisphere stimulation including the cerebellum and the midbrain. And so in this case here I'm, I'm using large targets. This is an older fella and I want to make sure he can see the target very well. 
the pursuit speed is going to be at 4, and uh, quantity of saccades 8. So, you know, his, his visual map is, is very distorted and is inaccurate, so we want small saccades uh, and multiple small saccades to help um, restore uh, those, uh, that, that visual map. Okay, so uh, I'm going to do three reps. Uh, initial pause will be two seconds. That'll give him enough time to focus on the target and get ready to start following the eye strategy. Final pause, uh, two seconds. Intervals are going to be random, and uh, so that way he can anticipate. And, uh, and, and in this case, I may actually, um, a good option would be to make it every one second, so that way uh, it would be easier. So when it's difficult to generate saccades, and we want to do everything we can to help them do them well. So an actual one second interval here would be a really good option. A bell sound, again, the sound, uh, the, the audible cue of a bell or really another sound would be one that he can hear well would be very helpful to optimize the efficiency of the saccades. And we want to do everything we can to make him better. So uh, another thing too that I'm not covering here is that it's appropriate for this patient to do some gaze stability exercises first. Um, but just keep that in mind. So here we go. This is what it looks like. You can see the saccades moving uh, up and to the right. And in this case, we're activating the left hemisphere. Uh, we've got the hemistim going in the upper right field, stimulating the left temporal lobe, um, left temporal lobe to optimize word retrieval. Uh, this will be really good again for his left. Um, left brain, left frontal lobe, and left parietal lobe with the pursuit going back down to the left and right cerebellum. Okay, after he's done three repetitions here, I'm going to change the settings so that the uh, movement will be going up and to the left. And this way here, we're still, uh, still keeping that hemistim, stimulating the left temporal lobe. Um, but the saccades going up and to the left here are activating the right frontal lobe and left cerebellum. And now the pursuit going back down to the right is activating the right parietal lobe. And we'll do three repetitions here. And then I would give him a little bit of rest and repeat this whole sequence three times. I hope this was useful.